the term mythology can refer either to a collection of myths or to the study of myths. A mythology, in the sense of a collection of myths, is an important feature of many cultures. According to Alan Dundas, a myth is a sacred narrative explaining how the world and humankind assumed their present form, although, in a very broad sense, the word can refer to any traditional story. Bruce Lincoln defines myth as ideology in narrative form. Myths may arise as either truthful depictions or over-elaborated accounts of historical events, as allegory for personification of natural phenomena, or as an explanation of ritual. They are used to convey religious or idealized experience, to establish behavioral models, and to teach. Modern mythopia such as fantasy novels, manga, and urban legend, with many competing artificial mythoi acknowledged as fiction, supports the idea of myth as a modern, not just ancient, social practice. Mythology, in the sense of the study of myths, dates back to antiquity. Early rival classifications of Greek mythos by Euemerus, Plato's Phaedrus, and Solustius were developed by the Neoplatonists and revived by Renaissance mythographers. 19th century comparative mythology reinterpreted myth as a primitive and failed counterpart of science, a disease of language, or a misinterpretation of magical ritual. By contrast, many later interpretations have rejected a conflict between myth and science, sometimes viewing myths as expressions of, or metaphors for, human psychology. Tension between the search for a monomyth or a myth and skepticism towards such comparativism has marked scholarship on myth. Nature of myths, characteristics, the main characters in myths are usually gods, supernatural heroes and humans. As stories, myths are often endorsed by rulers and priests and closely linked to religion or spirituality. In the society in which it is told, a myth is usually regarded as a true account of the remote past. In fact, many societies have two categories of traditional narrative, true stories, or myths, and false stories, or fables. Creation myths generally take place in a primordial age, when the world had not yet achieved its current form, and explain how the world gained its current form and how customs, institutions and taboos were established. Terminology the term mythology can refer either to the study of myths or to a body or collection of myths. For example, landscape mythology is the study of landscape features in terms of total mystic mythology, whereas Hittite mythology is the body of myths of the Hittites. Alan Dundas defines myth as a sacred narrative which explains how the world and humanity evolved into their present form a story that serves to define the fundamental worldview of a culture by explaining aspects of the natural world and delineating the psychological and social practices and ideals of a society. Many scholars in other fields use the term myth in somewhat different ways. In a very broad sense, the word can refer to any traditional story or, in casual use, a popular misconception or imaginary entity. Because the folkloristic meaning of myth is often confused with this more pejorative usage, the original unambiguous term mythos may be a better word to distinguish the positive definition from the negative. Closely related to myth are legend and folktale. Myths, legends, and folktales are different types of traditional story. Unlike mythos, folktales can be set in any time and any place, and they are not considered true or sacred by the societies that tell them. Like mythos, legends are stories that are traditionally considered true, but are set in a more recent time, when the world was much as it is today. Legends generally feature humans as their main characters, whereas myths generally focus on superhuman characters. The distinction between myth, legend, and folktale is meant simply as a useful tool for grouping traditional stories. In many cultures, it is hard to draw a sharp line between myths and legends. Instead of dividing their traditional stories into myths, legends, and folktales, some cultures divide them into two categories, one that roughly corresponds to folktales, and one that combines myths and legends. Even myths and folktales are not completely distinct. A story may be considered true in one society, but considered fictional in another society. In fact, when a myth loses its status as part of a religious system, it often takes on traits more typical of folktales, with its formerly divine characters reinterpreted as human heroes, 
giants, or fairies. Myth, legend, and folktale are only a few of the categories of traditional stories. Other categories include anecdotes and some kinds of jokes. Traditional stories, in turn, are only one category within folklore, which also includes items such as gestures, costumes, and music. Origins of myth, Uemerism. One theory claims that myths are distorted accounts of real historical events. According to this theory, storytellers repeatedly elaborated upon historical accounts until the figures in those accounts gained the status of gods. For example, one might argue that the myth of the wind god Aeolus evolved from a historical account of a king who taught his people to use sails and interpret the winds. Herodotus and Prodicus made claims of this kind. This theory is named Euemerism after the mythologist Euemerus, who suggested that the Greek gods developed from legends about human beings. Allegory Some theories propose that myths began as allegories. According to one theory, myths began as allegories for natural phenomena, Apollo represents the sun, Poseidon represents water, and so on. According to another theory, myths began as allegories for philosophical or spiritual concepts. Athena represents wise judgment, Aphrodite represents desire, etc. The 19th century Sanskritist Max Maher one quarter layer supported an allegorical theory of myth. He believed that myths began as allegorical descriptions of nature, but gradually came to be interpreted literally, for example, a poetic description of the sea as raging was eventually taken literally, and the sea was then thought of as a raging god. Personification some thinkers believe that myths resulted from the personification of inanimate objects and forces. According to these thinkers, the ancients worshipped natural phenomena such as fire and air, gradually coming to describe them as gods. For example, according to the theory of mythopoeic thought, the ancients tended to view things as persons, not as mere objects. Thus, they described natural events as acts of personal gods, thus giving rise to myths. Myth Ritual Theory According to the Myth Ritual Theory, the existence of myth is tied to ritual. In its most extreme form, this theory claims that myths arose to explain rituals. This claim was first put forward by the biblical scholar William Robertson Smith. According to Smith, people begin performing rituals for some reason that is not related to myth. Later, after they have forgotten the original reason for a ritual, they try to account for the ritual by inventing a myth and claiming that the ritual commemorates the events described in that myth. The anthropologist James Fraser had a similar theory. Fraser believed that primitive man starts out with a belief in magical laws. Later, when man begins to lose faith in magic, he invents myths about gods and claims that his formerly magical rituals are religious rituals intended to appease the gods. Functions of Myth Mir Shiel Eliad argued that one of the foremost functions of myth is to establish models for behavior and that myths may also provide a religious experience. By telling or reenacting myths, members of traditional societies detach themselves from the present and return to the mythical age, thereby bringing themselves closer to the divine. Laurie Hunko asserts that, in some cases, a society will reenact a myth in an attempt to reproduce the conditions of the mythical age. For example, it will reenact the healing performed by a god at the beginning of time in order to heal someone in the present. Similarly, Roland Barthes argues that modern culture explores religious experience. Because it is not the job of science to define human morality, a religious experience is an attempt to connect with a perceived moral past, which is in contrast with the technological present. Joseph Campbell writes, in The Long View of the History of Mankind, four essential functions of mythology can be discerned. The first and most distinctive a euro vitalizing all a euro is that of eliciting and supporting a sense of all before the mystery of being. The second function of mythology is to render a cosmology, an image of the universe that will support and be supported by this sense of all before the mystery of the presence and the presence of a mystery. A third function of mythology is to support the current social order, to integrate the individual organically with his group. The fourth function of mythology is to initiate the individual into the order of realities of his own psyche, guiding him towards his own spiritual enrichment and realization. In a later work Campbell explains the relationship of myth to civilization, 
the rise and fall of civilizations in the long, broad course of history can be seen largely to be a function of the integrity and cogency of their supporting canons of myth. For not authority but aspiration is the motivator, builder, and transformer of civilization. A mythological canon is an organization of symbols, ineffable in import, by which the energies of aspiration are evoked and gathered toward a focus. And yet the history of civilization is not one of harmony. There are two pathologies. One is interpreting myth as pseudoscience, as though it had to do with directing nature instead of putting you in accord with nature, and the other is the political interpretation of myths to the advantage of one group within a society, or one society within a group of nations. Campbell gives his answer to the question, what is the function of myth today? In episode 2 of Bill Moyers is the Power of Myth series. Study of Mythology Historically, the important approaches to the study of mythology have been those of Vico, Schelling, Schiller, Bung, Freud, La Copyright v. Brill, La Copyright v. Strauss, Fry, the Soviet School, and the Myth and Ritual School. Pre-modern theories, the critical interpretation of myth goes back as far as the Presocratics. Euemerus was one of the most important pre-modern mythologists. He interpreted myths as accounts of actual historical events, distorted over many retellings. Solustius, for example, divides myths into five categories a Eurotheological, physical, animastic, material and mixed. This last being those myths which show the interaction between two or more of the previous categories and which, he says, are particularly used in initiations to ones who were even trying to change content of the myth according to probability would be found criticism in Plato Phaedrus, in which Socrates says that it is the province of one who is vehemently curious and laborious, and not entirely happy. Although Plato famously condemned poetic myth when discussing the education of the young in the Republic, primarily on the grounds that there was a danger that the young and uneducated might take the stories of gods and heroes literally, Nevertheless he constantly refers to myths of all kinds throughout his writings. As Platonism developed in the phases commonly called Middle Platonism and Neoplatonism, such writers as Plutarch, Porphyry, Proclus, Olympiodorus and Damasius wrote explicitly about the symbolic interpretation of traditional and Orphic myths. Interest in polytheistic mythology revived in the Renaissance, with early works on mythography appearing in the 16th century such as the Theologia Mythologica. Myths are not the same as fables, legends, folktales, fairy tales, anecdotes, or fiction, but the concepts may overlap. Notably, during the 19th century period of Romanticism, folktales and fairy tales were perceived as eroded fragments of earlier mythology. Mythological themes are also very often consciously employed in literature, beginning with Homer. The resulting work may expressly refer to a mythological background without itself being part of a body of myths. The medieval romance in particular plays with this process of turning myth into literature. Euemerism refers to the process of rationalization of myths, putting themes formally imbued with mythological qualities into pragmatic contexts, for example following a cultural or religious paradigm shift. Conversely, Historical and literary material may acquire mythological qualities over time, for example the matter of Britain referring to the legendary history of Great Britain, especially those focused on King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, and the matter of France, based on historical events of the 5th and 8th centuries, respectively, were first made into epic poetry and became partly mythological over the following centuries. Conscious generation of mythology has been termed mythopoeia by J. R. Tolkien, 16, and was notoriously also suggested, very separately, by Nazi ideologist Alfred Rosenberg. 19th century theories, the first scholarly theories of myth appeared during the second half of the 19th century. In general, these 19th century theories framed myth as a failed or obsolete mode of thought, often by interpreting myth as the primitive counterpart of modern science. For example, E. B. Tyler interpreted myth as an attempt at a literal explanation for natural phenomena, unable to conceive of impersonal natural laws. Early man tried to explain natural phenomena by attributing souls to inanimate objects, giving rise to animism. According to Tyler, human thought evolves through various stages, 
starting with mythological ideas and gradually progressing to scientific ideas. Not all scholars a Euro not even all 19th century scholars a Euro have agreed with this view. For example, Lucien La Copyright B. Brill claimed that the primitive mentality is a condition of the human mind, and not a stage in its historical development. Max Maher one Cortelaire called myth a disease of language. He speculated that myths arose due to the lack of abstract nouns and neuter gender in ancient languages, anthropomorphic figures of speech, necessary in such languages, were eventually taken literally, leading to the idea that natural phenomena were conscious beings, gods. The anthropologist James Fraser saw myths as a misinterpretation of magical rituals, which were themselves based on a mistaken idea of natural law. According to Fraser, man begins with an unfounded belief in impersonal magical laws. When he realizes that his applications of these laws don't work, he gives up his belief in natural law, in favor of a belief in personal gods controlling nature a euro thus giving rise to religious myths. Meanwhile, man continues practicing formerly magical rituals through force of habit, reinterpreting them as reenactments of mythical events. Finally, Fraser contends, man realizes that nature does follow natural laws, but now he discovers their true nature through science. Here, again, science makes myth obsolete, as Fraser puts it, man progresses from magic through religion to science. Robert Siegel asserts that by pitting mythical thought against modern scientific thought, such theories implied that modern man must abandon myth. 20th century theories, many 20th century theories of myth rejected the 19th century theories opposition of myth and science. In general, 20th century theories have tended to see myth as almost anything but an outdated counterpart to science, a euro consequently, moderns are not obliged to abandon myth for science. Swiss psychologist Carl Jung tried to understand the psychology behind world myths. Jung asserted that all humans share certain innate unconscious psychological forces, which he called archetypes. Jung believed that the similarities between the myths from different cultures reveals the existence of these universal archetypes. Joseph Campbell believed that there were two different orders of mythology, myths that are metaphorical of spiritual potentiality in the human being, and myths that have to do with specific societies. Joseph Campbell's major work is The Masks of God I-4. In the first volume, Primitive Mythology, he outlines clearly his intention, without straining beyond the treasuries of evidence already on hand in these widely scattered departments of our subject, therefore, but simply gathering from them the membra disjuncta of a unitary mythological science, I attempt in the following pages the first sketch of a natural history of the gods and heroes such as in its final form should include in its purview all divine beings a euro a zoology includes all animals and botany all plants a euro not regarding any as sacrosanct or beyond its scientific domain. For, as in the visible world of the vegetable and animal kingdoms, so also in the visionary world of the gods, there has been a history, an evolution, a series of mutations, governed by laws. And to show forth such laws is the proper aim of science. In his fourth volume however he coins the phrase, creative mythology, which he explains as, in the context of traditional mythology, the symbols are presented in socially maintained rites, through which the individual is required to experience, or will pretend to have experienced, certain insights, sentiments and commitments. In what I'm calling creative mythology, on the other hand, this order is reversed. The individual has had an experience of his own a euro of order, horror, beauty, or even mere exhilaration which he seeks to communicate through signs. And if his realization has been of a certain depth and import, his communication will have the force and value of living myth for those, that is to say, who receive and respond to it of themselves, with recognition, uncoerced. Claude La Copyright by Strauss believed that myths reflect patterns in the mind and interpreted those patterns more as fixed mental structures a euro specifically, pairs of opposites a euro than as unconscious feelings or urges. In his appendix to myths, dreams and mysteries, and in the myth of the eternal return, Mir Sheil Eliad attributed modern man a euro unregistered trademark s anxieties to his rejection of myths in the sense of the sacred. In the 1950s, 
Roland Barthes published a series of essays examining modern myths and the process of their creation in his book Mythologies. Comparative Mythology Comparative mythology is the systematic comparison of myths from different cultures. It seeks to discover underlying themes that are common to the myths of multiple cultures. In some cases, comparative mythologists use the similarities between different mythologies to argue that those mythologies have a common source. This common source may be a common source of inspiration or a common proto-mythology that diverged into the various mythologies we see today. Nineteenth-century interpretations of myth were often highly comparative, seeking a common origin for all myths. However, modern-day scholars tend to be more suspicious of comparative approaches, avoiding overly general or universal statements about mythology. One exception to this modern trend is Joseph Campbell's book The Hero with a Thousand Faces, which claims that all hero myths follow the same underlying pattern. This theory of a monomyth is out of favor with the mainstream study of mythology. Modern mythology In modern society, myth is often regarded as historical or obsolete. Many scholars in the field of cultural studies are now beginning to research the idea that myth has worked itself into modern discourses. Modern formats of communication allow for widespread communication across the globe, thus enabling mythological discourse and exchange among greater audiences than ever before. Various elements of myth can now be found in television, cinema and video games. Although myth was traditionally transmitted through the oral tradition on a small scale, the technology of the film industry has enabled filmmakers to transmit myths to large audiences via film dissemination. In the psychology of Carl Jung, myths are the expression of a culture or societia euro unregistered trademark s goals, fears, ambitions and dreams. Film is ultimately an expression of the society in which it was credited, and reflects the norms and ideals of the time and location in which it is created. In this sense, film is simply the evolution of myth. The technological aspect of film changes the way the myth is distributed, but the core idea of the myth is the same. The basis of modern storytelling in both cinema and television lies deeply rooted in the mythological tradition. Many contemporary and technologically advanced movies often rely on ancient myths to construct narratives. The Disney Corporation is notorious among cultural study scholars for a Euro or reinventing Euro traditional childhood myths. While many films are not as obvious as Disney fairy tales in respect to the employment of myth, the plots of many films are largely based on the rough structure of the myth. Mythological archetypes such as the cautionary tale regarding the abuse of technology, battles between gods, and creation stories are often the subject of major film productions. These films are often created under the guise of cyberpunk action movies, fantasy dramas, and apocalyptic tales. Although the range of narratives, as well as the medium in which it is being told is constantly increasing, it is clear that myth continues to be a pervasive and essential component of the collective imagination. Recent films such as Clash of the Titans, Immortals, or Thor continue the trend of mining traditional mythology in order to directly create a plot for modern consumption. With the invention of modern myths such as urban legends, the mythological traditional will carry on to the increasing variety of mediums available in the 21st century and beyond. The crucial idea is that myth is not simply a collection of stories permanently fixed to a particular time and place in history, but an ongoing social practice within every society. Etymology The word mythology exposition of myths comes from Middle French mythology, from Late Latin mythologia, from Greek I one quarter I I I I I I cubed I I plus or minus mythologia legendary lore, a telling of mythic legends. A legend, story, tale from I one quarter AII mythos myth, and III cubed II plus or minus loja study. See also General, Archetypal Literary Criticism, Artificial Mythology, Creation Myth, Flood Myth, Fairy, Fable, Gemythology, Legendary Creature, LGBT Themes in Mythology, Mythem, Mythical Place, Mythography, National Myth, Origin of Death Myth, Mythological Archetypes, Culture Hero, Death Deity, Earth Mother, First Man or Woman, Hero, Life Death Rebirth Deity, Lunar Deity, Psychopomp, Sky Father, Solar Deity, Trickster, Underworld, 
myth and religion, Bengali mythology, Chinese mythology, Christian mythology, Hindu mythology, Islamic mythology, Japanese mythology, Jesus Christ in comparative mythology, Jewish mythology, magic and mythology, Maya mythology, religion and mythology, lists, list of deities, list of legendary creatures by type, list of legendary creatures, list of mythical objects, list of mythologies, list of women warriors in folklore, notes, references, journals about mythology, new comparative mythology slash nouvelle mythology compara copyright e, http, novelli mythologia compare e dot hotet fort dot com slash oladagos, http, www spec publications oladagos, studia mythologica slavica, http, smszrc sazasi slash, mythological studies journal, http, journals for kandex pindex, the journal of germanic mythology and folklore, http, www.jgmf.org slash books Armstrong, Karen. A Short History of Myth. Not Canada, 2006. Bascom, William. The Forms of Folklore, Prose Narratives. Sacred Narrative, Readings in the Theory of Myth. Ed. Alan Dundas. Berkeley, University of California Press, 1984. 5 Euro 29. Bill Finch, Thomas. Bill Finch's Mythology. Whitefish, Kessinger, 2004. Campbell, Joseph. The Power of Myth. New York, Doubleday, 1988. Doty, William. Myth, A Handbook. Westport, Greenwood, 2004. Dundas, Alan. Binary Opposition in Myth. The Prep Levi Strauss Debate in Retrospect. Western Folklore 56, 39 Euro 50. Dundas, Alon. Introduction. Sacred Narrative, Readings in the Theory of Myth. Ed. Alan Dundas. Berkeley, University of California Press, 1984. 1 Euro 3. Dunes, Alon. Madness and Method Plus a Plea for Projective Inversion in Myth. Myth and Method. Ed. Laurie Patton and Wendy Doniger. Charlottesville, University of Virginia Press, 1996. Eliad, Mirshia. Myth and Reality. Trans. Willard Atrask. New York, Harper and Row, 1963. Eliad, Mirshia. Myths, Dreams and Mysteries. Trans. Philip Marnirette. New York, Harper and Row, 1967. Euemerism. The Concise Oxford Dictionary of World Religions. Ed. John Boker. Oxford University Press, 2000. Oxford Reference Online. Oxford University Press. UCA Euro Berkeley Library March 20, 2009. For Bioni, Paolo The Philosophy of the Imagination in Vico and Mailbranch. FUP, English Edition 2009. PDF, Frankfurt, Henri, A.L. The Intellectual Adventure of Ancient Man, an Essay on Speculative Thought in the Ancient Near East. Chicago, University of Chicago Press, 1977. Fraser, James. The Golden Bough. New York, Macmillan, 1922. Graf, Fritz. Greek Mythology. Trans. Thomas Maria. Baltimore, Johns Hopkins University Press, 1993. Hunko, Laurie. The Problem of Defining Myth. Sacred Narrative, Readings in the Theory of Myth. Ed. Alan Dundas. Berkeley, University of California Press, 1984. 41 Euro 52. Kirk, G.S. Myth. Its Meaning and Functions in Ancient and Other Cultures. Berkeley, Cambridge University Press, 1973. Kirk, G.S. On Defining Myths. Sacred Narrative, Readings in the Theory of Myth. Ed. Alan Dundas. Berkeley, University of California Press, 1984. 
53 a Euro 61. Leonard, Scott. The History of Mythology, Part 1. Scott A. Leonard's Homepage. August 2007 Youngstown State University, November 17, 2009, Littleton, Covington. The New Comparative Mythology, An Anthropological Assessment of the Theories of Georges du Mesil. Berkeley, University of California Press, 1973. Melitinsky, Elia. The Poetics of Myth. Trans. Guy Lanou and Alexander Satitsky. New York, Routledge, 2000. Myth. Encyclopedia Britannica 2009. Encyclopedia Britannica Online, March 21, 2009. Myths. A Dictionary of English Folklore. Jacqueline Simpson and Steve Roud. Oxford University Press, 2000. Oxford Reference Online. Oxford University Press. UCA Euro Berkeley Library March 20, 2009 OxfordReference.com, Northup, Leslie. Myth Placed Priorities, Religion and a Study of Myth. Religious Studies Review 32.1, 2006, 5 a Euro 10. A Flaherty, Wendy. Hindu Myths, a Sourcebook. London, Penguin, 1975. Petersoni, Raphael. The Truth of Myth. Sacred Narrative, Readings in the Theory of Myth. Ed. Alan Dundas. Berkeley, University of California Press, 1984. 98 to Euro 109. Siegel, Robert. Myth, A Very Short Introduction. Oxford, Oxford UP, 2004. Simpson, Michael. Introduction. Apollodorus. Gods and Heroes of the Greeks. Trans. Michael Simpson. Amherst, University of Massachusetts Press, 1976. 1 a Euro 9. Singer, Irving. Introduction, Philosophical Dimensions of Myth and Cinema. Cinematic Myth Making, Philosophy and Film. Cambridge, Massachusetts, United States, MIT Press Books, 2008. 3 a Euro 6. Web October 23, 2011. In Dit, William. Classical Heroes in Modern Movies, Mythological Patterns of the Superhero. Journal of Media Psychology 9.393 a Euro 95. York University Libraries. Web. Corvin, Michael J. Folklore Studies in Popular Film and Television, A Necessary Critical Survey. Journal of American Folklore 116.460 176 a Euro 195. Print. Olson, Eric L. Great Expectations, The Role of Myth in 1980s Films with Child Heroes. Virginia Polytechnic Scholarly Library. Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University. Retrieved October 24, 2011 a, Matira, Lofamundra. Children's Oral Literature and Modern Mass Media. Indian Folklore Research Journal 5.855 a Euro 57. Print. Korma, John. Narrative. Critical Ideas in Television Studies. New York, United States, Carandon Press, 2007. 47 a Euro 59. Print. Further reading, Stefan Arvidsson, Aryan Idols. Indo-European Mythology is Ideology and Science, University of Chicago Press, 2006. ISBN 0-226-02860-7, Roland Barthes, Mythologies, Keys W. Bowl, The Freedom of Man in Myth. Vanderbilt University Press, 1968. Richard Buxton. The Complete World of Greek Mythology. London, Thames and Hudson. 2004. Exapo, Theories of Mythology, Edith Hamilton, Mythology, Graves, Robert. Introduction. New LaRouse Encyclopedia of Mythology. Trans. Richard Aldington and Delano Ames. London, Hamlin, 1968 by Euroville. Joseph Campbell, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Princeton University Press, 1949. 
Flight of the Wild Gander, Explorations in the Mythological Dimension, Select Essays 1944 A Euro 1968 New World Library, 3rd ed., ISBN 978-1-57731-210-9. The Power of Myth. Doubleday, 1988, ISBN 0-385-24773-7. Thou Art That. New World Library, 2001. ISBN 1-57731-202-3. Mir Sheil Eliad, Cosmos and History, The Myth of the Eternal Return. Princeton University Press, 1954. The Sacred and the Profane, The Nature of Religion. Trans. Willard Atrask. N.Y., Harper and Rowe, 1961. Louis Herbert Gray, ed. The Mythology of All Races, in 12 Vols, 1916. Lucien La Copyright v. Brill, Mental Functions in Primitive Societies, Primitive Mentality, The Soul of the Primitive, The Supernatural and the Nature of the Primitive Mind, Primitive Mythology, The Mystic Experience and Primitive Symbolism. Charles H. Long, Alpha, The Myths of Creation. George Brazilla, 1963. A Flaherty, Wendy. Hindu Myths, a Sourcebook. London, Penguin, 1975. Barry B. Powell, Classical Myth, 5th edition, Prentice Hall. Santillana and von Deckend. Hamlet's Mill, an essay investigating the origins of human knowledge and its transmission through myth, Harvard University Press. ISBN 0-87923-215-3. Isabel Loring Wallace and Jenny Hirsch, Contemporary Art and Classical Myth. Farnham, Ashgate, ISBN 978-0-7546-6974-6, Walker, Stephen F. and Siegel, Robert A. Lung and the Unions on Myth, An Introduction, Theorists of Myth, Routledge, ISBN 978-0-8153-2259-7. Van der Zajo and Miriam Leonard, Laughing with Medusa. Oxford, Oxford University Press, ISBN 978-0-19-923794-4. Zong, in Sob. Folk Tales from Korea. 3rd ed. Elizabeth, Hollim, 1989. External Links, The New Student's Reference Work Mythology, ed. Beach. At Wikisus. Leonard, Scott. The History of Mythology, Part 1. Youngstown State University. Greek Mythology, Sacred Texts, Myths and Mythmakers Old Tales and Superstitions Interpreted by Comparative Mythology by John Fisk. LIMC Lexicon Iconographicum Mythology Classici, a database of ancient objects linked with mythology, Joseph Campbell on Bill Moyers is the Power of Myth.